does seem like an odd question. Where did Christianity come from? Because we think, well, we all know where Christianity came from. It came from Christ. And it's in the Bible. That's what the New Testament's about. And, uh, but you know, my journey as a young man who had a passion for God, a passion for my country, a passion for the scriptures and studying the scriptures, and it led me away from nationalism. It led me away from Christianity. I'm going to be bold enough to say this. Not that I haven't said it before, but it's a bold statement. And some of our listeners may not have heard this kind of statement. The two greatest evils on the planet. The two greatest evil systems are nationalism and Christianity. Religion in general but Christianity specifically. And the reason among all the religions of the world, so all the nations of the world are evil and corrupt, no matter how they're presented and how they appear. And all the religions of the world are evil and corrupt. But Christianity really stands out because it bears the name of Christ. And that makes it, evil multiplied. And it also attempts to bear the name and witness of God. And every evil thing and perversion about God that we know and Christ that we know and the scriptures that we know comes from Christianity. Sometimes it may seem like we're joking, but we will say, and we're not, I'm not joking. We will say, you know, when I started studying the scriptures and started on this journey, I started realizing Christianity had something wrong. There were some things wrong about Christianity. And then as time went on, I realized, wow, they got a lot of things wrong. And then you progress to say, wow, I think Christianity has almost everything wrong. Until you finally get to a place where you know, does Christianity have anything right? So this whole idea of Christian nationalism, we take the two greatest evils of the world and its system and we merge them together into something very dangerous and very destructive. So you ask where, you know, where does Christianity come from? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, and we deal with these things in, in the world affairs and national politics. and um, But Christianity does not come from Christ. He did not originate a new religion when Christ came. In fact, he was firmly planted in Judaism. And he was a minister of the circumcision to confirm the promises made to the fathers, according to Paul in Romans chapter 15. So Christianity doesn't come from Christ. And then, of course, Paul. Paul did establish something brand new. In Ephesians and Colossians, he reveals the secret administration. But it's not a new religion. It's not Christianity. It's the secret administration about the headship of Christ uh, over the universe and him reconciling the universe to himself. What a far different message and operation than Christianity is all about. And think about it for a moment. Probably one of the most clever deceptions of the adversary is to create a religion that distorts the very person and nature of Christ and of his father. And then you know what? People who are raised in that system in the, you know, our, our, our podcast is, is about the, 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 the freedom journey. But religion's anything but that. Christianity is anything but freedom. And people who are raised in that, we had a great advantage because 
you know, Father called us out and he called us into faith, though, the true Christ and his true father, which is glorious. But Christianity has made more atheists and agnostics than any movement, any system. It, 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 it is, it is a, 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 an expert, Christianity is, at creating agnostics and atheists. So what a great, what a, what a great, clever plan of the adversary to take away the scriptures and take away Christ and take away God and turn them into myths. So here's the interesting thing is, so when did, where did Christianity come from? And when did it start? It actually started 300 years after Christ was here. And here's the odd thing. It's not odd when you know there's an, that God has set up a servant who's, a, who's the adversary of his work. It actually makes a lot of sense what I'm getting ready to tell you. But think about how odd this is. The system that was in place that assassinated Jesus Christ. Interesting that that's the word the concordant version uses all through the book of Acts when, when, the, when the accusation is coming against those who participated in the crucifixion of Christ. Over and over, the translation is that Christ was assassinated. And the system that assassinated Jesus Christ, that put him on the pole and killed him, was Rome. Rome, it was nationalism. Zealous, political, patriotic nationalism killed assassinated Jesus Christ. 300 years later, the same system that assassinated him formed a religion in his honor. Christianity was formed by nationalism. 300 years after Rome assassinated, crucified Christ, its emperor, Constantine, established a new religion, Christianity. Nationalism is really good at this. You take a pulse of what people like, what's popular, you take a pulse and you go with that. That's why people, that's why politicians always flipping around. You know, they're listening to the polls. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Constance was, you know, if you can't beat these people, let's join them. So we're going to take over. We're going to take over the person of Christ who was here. We're going to take over his message, his ministry. We're going to take over anything that Paul taught. We're going to take over the Bible. And so Constantine formed a new religion nationalism created Christianity. And interestingly enough, it, its influence led the way that in the uh, 11th through the 15th century, this Christian nationalism, by the way, the first Christian nationalist then was Constantine. He was the first Christian nationalist, really good at it. He, 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 he merged Christianity, created Christianity, Christianity merged it with Rome. And now we got a Christian nation. The first Christian nationalist was Constantine. The first Christian nation, Christian nation was Rome. And it led way to the Crusades of the 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th centuries, which was a military operation to convert the world to Romanism and Christianity. 
Here's what we know about nationalism and Christianity. They are warmongers. They are about dominance and control and gaining power and forcibly converting people to their viewpoint or killing them if they don't cooperate. Nothing's changed. The suit it wears looks different. You know, the, the, the commercial approach looks different. So nationalism created Christianity, merged them together as a unit. And now when you've got political, governmental control of people and spiritual control of people, it's the ultimate power. And the ultimate power grab in our day has been going on since the third century. Christian nationalism. And many of our professed brothers and sisters will get all caught up in this movement. They'll lay aside their calling. They'll lay aside the spiritual aspects of what Christ has called us to, love, grace, acceptance, embracement. They'll lay all of that aside for this fight. That's not even our fight. We are not terrestrial. That's not our calling. Our calling is not earthly. You know, it goes back to our prior broadcast, you know, a podcast where we, where we talked about set your affection on things above. Well, tell you what, that's not. That's not the United States government, and it's not Christianity, and you can be free. It is, it is your family and all. I mean, all, all the wonderful things that we can enjoy, but these systems of bondage and evil and perversion, nothing like the adversary to suck the believer into that, and he abandons his calling. He abandons his purpose. He ab abandons his purpose, you know, all designed by God.